Hello everybody, this is a safety and information uh, video on the PEMF and the bifiller magnetic coil. Uh, the first thing that I would like to present is the PEMF is a US based box that plugs into 110, 120 volts US mains. Um, that's our main voltage is 110, 120 volts in that range. This is not a European box, and so inside this box there is no 320 volts running around. There's only about 160 volts running around, half the 320, because it's a U.S. box. And that is a very significant difference. If you did plug this into a European system, you would pop the caps in here. They're not rated for that kind of voltage level. For Europe, we have a, an adapter, which gives you isolation by default. But part of the point of this video is to show that the PEMF does not need to have an isolation transformer. But if you're going to run this in Europe, you get it by default because it's the only way to convert 220 down to 110 to run the box safely. So you get isolation as a, um, a default factor. Okay, with that, I would like to explain further that you can touch if you could have access but you don't get access to anything to touch that's hot or common ground there's nothing and I will include a little information about the coil too um, I'm going to put this device here which is a three for one you get three female uh, AC plugs and I'm doing that so I can plug the light in I have a male plug with two wires coming out and the ends are exposed. Those are going to be hot wires. This is a safety video, so I want to tell you do not do this. This is for demonstration uh, and demonstration only to demonstrate some points that I would like to make about safety. Do not do this. This is not safe. Um, but to be able to show you things, I need to do this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to plug this in. The coil's already plugged in, as you can see. Um, there's two windings in the coil, and they're both plugged into the PEMF box. I have a meter here. It's already turned on. I'm going to connect the meter to the t two wires coming out, hot to hot, red to red, and common to common. And I'm also going to connect an oscilloscope, hot to hot. Red, red, or common to common. Okay, so I have both an, an oscilloscope connected to the PEMF and a meter. The meter is reading zero because it's turned off right now. Yeah, you can see zero real nicely. I'm going to turn the PEMF on. And what you're looking at is a modified sine wave. And the peak values on that modified sine wave are roughly 160 volts peak to peak which is um, 0.707 of that would be the RMS voltage of roughly 120 volts, roughly. Um, the meter is not reading that level. I have it turned to AC, and that's because this meter is designed to work with 50 and 60 cycles. Right now I'm pulsing at about, um, I don't know, I, I really don't know, I'll guess maybe five, six uh, pulses per second. Um, the meter wants to see 50 or 60 uh, cycles, and it's only getting... Um, five cycles maybe and that's why it's not reading uh, very good I'm going to turn the meter to turn the pot all the way up so now I'm pulsing at about 25 cycles per second and the meters reading about 97 uh, 98 90 whatever and it's uh, still not reading what really is there but you can see that there is juice voltage um, coming off the two hot wires that are in parallel with the light bulb. Put this back down. I'm going to turn this off. Before I turn this off, I forgot to show you something. This is a ground. I got my finger right on the ground. I'm touching it. You can see I'm touching it. And I'm not getting shocked. This is the hot wire. Can you see it? Yeah, you can hardly see it. What I'm going to do is on the other end, here's where the probe is. This wire here is hot. If I connect it, you'll see the meter start reading. About 90 volts. I'm going to touch this. This is the bird on the wire example. 
It takes two po contact points for you to get juiced. The PEMF does not expose anything, so you can even have access to one contact point, never mind two. So if you touch one contact point uh, because a wire got scraped or something like that, you're still not going to get juiced. It doesn't matter whether you're touching the hot or the common. Okay, I hope that makes that point clear. The bird on the hot, the uh, high voltage line is only touching one line at a time with its feet. Not going to get juiced. Okay, that's here. What about what's going into the coil? Because it was claimed that the coil was dangerous because there's a couple of wires there. And I'll explain that in a few seconds. I, made, I, I took the end off of an extension cord and it exposes... Um, the terminal so I can get up both the hot and the, um, the common. I'm going to plug that in and there is a polarity to observe. I'm going to plug that in and now there's a hot lead and a common. I'm not going to touch both of those either at once but I will touch either one of them one at a time. I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the uh, jumpers because they connect real easy and I'm going to connect the red jumper to the hot lead and I'm going to connect the white jumper to the common and I'm going to disconnect the meter and put the meter aside and I'm going to take the connection off here and I'm going to connect the scope up through these jumpers red to red or red to the center probe and the ground on the scope to the ground white here okay first thing I want to show you is I'm going to touch the white that's the juice going straight into the coil and not a shock I can touch one wire how about touching the hot wire I can touch the hot wire and you can see I'm touching it and I should do this a little more in front of the camera. I'm touching it and I'm not getting juice there either. I want to explain something what, that you're seeing in the scope. You're seeing the peak voltage that's going into the coil. You're not seeing how much current is going in, but you're seeing how much voltage is. And that's what that little, that little tail going up in the air. And on my scope, it's registering 50 volts are going, going into this coil at quite a few amps. I don't know how many amps without putting an amp meter in series. But you need a special amp meter because uh, my amp meter wants to see continuous current, not uh, just a quick pulse. All right, so if I slow the pulse rate up, you'll notice, and I'm turning the dial, I'm slowing the pulse rate up, you'll notice that the voltage spike going into the coil is getting larger. This is for information. The slower the pulse, the more powerful the applied voltage or the higher the applied voltage is and the more powerful the magnetic pulse will be. And I'm slowing it up to about one hertz. I'm guesstimating that I'm at one hertz because I know where the dial is and I know that's about one hertz. It's a little faster than one hertz. I'm going to go a little slower. And I'm looking at the peak here. You can see that peak go way up in the air. It's reading roughly 135. Uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, I'm, I'm a little off. Let me center this. It's reading about 140 volts. So it's about 140 volts uh, peak. And I'm pulsing at one pulse per second. There is a lot of current going along with that 140 volts. And it's going into the coil. It was implied that there was a danger point here because these two wires are going into the coil. They're dangerous. Those two wires are enamel coated. And they're both the positive wires. So if I scrape down and touch both of them at the same time, uh, it would be touching only one part of the circuit, the hot part, and there would be no ground completion. First of all, you can't touch them because they're enameled. And on top of that, I'll show you something else at the end of this video. Um, I think I'm at the end of the video, so I'm going to turn the unit off so I don't accidentally get juiced. And I'm going to bring the coil up real close to the camera. And I'm going to tip it so... Okay, there you can see it. 
you can see a glob covering um, those two wires. Those wires are not only insulated with enamel, but they're also insulated with a hard epoxy. You need a chisel now to get at them. Um, I don't know how thick the layer is covering them, but it's plenty enough to ensure that nobody's going to touch those two wires. And if you did touch those two wires, they are like touching the bird on the uh, like the bird touching the wire on a high voltage line. You're not going to get shocked anyway. You have to touch one of the inner wires going inside the uh, heat shrink at the same time to get a shock. But you're not going to get access to any of that because they're all insulated, including those wires that are uh, going into the heat shrink. Okay, so there is a presentation on um, the PEMF, uh, the true voltage that we're working with. Europe gets isolation by default with a isolation transformer, and the transformer is about 12 bucks, and it's nice and easy. You plug this into your mains and just plug the PEMF into the isolation transformer, and you're all done. Um, okay. I think I did a decent job in covering it. Um, please uh, respond if you have questions and if I didn't make something clear. And do not do what I just did. I'm taking this off, removing this. This is the way it's supposed to be. You now have no access to getting shocked. This is supposed to be out. <laughs> There's no place you can touch to get electrified. <laughs> okay. Um, have yourself a nice day. Please watch the other videos. I did a video on how to uh, actually wind the coil with my winding machine. You get to see it, see the winding in process. And there's a video coming about scalar waves and magnetic uh, waves. Um, PEMF totally not involved. It's connecting up to the spooky. And when you're connected up to the spooky, you're not uh, connected to the mains anyway. So the coil is still safe. It has, and, and that's what it was pr primarily designed for was to be a magnetic and scalar wave device. The PMF was a bonus. Thank you very much.